Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. All right, we're starting off with this picture sent by my subscriber, Emily. I hope I say this right. It's a picture of the Withlacoche River at sunset. It's apparently, it's in central Florida near the Crystal River Rainbow area. And she said it totally makes her think of the princess and the frog. I agree. Love it. All right, once again, we have a lot of stories about the working royals and some tidbits about, you know, the Montecito duo. So let's just get in there and see what we can do, shall we? Let's go. To start with, Michelle Obama's new book, The Light We Carry, is coming out November 15th. She's got a book tour coming up. And I couldn't help but notice of all the people on the list who are going through all this, um, book tour, who's not on that list? You guys know what I'm talking about. All right, I want to go back to Anne for a second because I told you guys she went to New York. She was the keynote speaker at a gala in New York City. It would have been nice to see some pictures of her. Well, some pictures have come out now. I was wondering when they were going to get around to releasing some of the photos. There's the plaque, you know, that'll go up to commemorate her visit. And there she is at the gala. She looks lovely. I love the outfit. You know what I mean? She's just fabulous. So, you know, Anne is very steady, she's unpretentious, and she does her work, and that's why articles are coming out like this one now. Yeah, you see that title? That's a deserving title for Anne, really. And last week, there was a Heart of Arabia expedition launch, and apparently, uh, Princess Anne attended as a patron. Yes, love it. Now, as far as her trip to New York goes, it came out, of course, that she flew commercial. We know she went from JFK Airport. We know that it was a very low-key visit. We know that she carried her own freaking bag. She didn't ask security to do it. And that, my friends, is why people love Anne. She's hardworking, down to earth, and doesn't ask other people to do things that she herself is not willing to do. Fabulous. In the meantime, let's turn our attention now to Sophie. She's still in Rwanda. She met with the country's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and the Minister for Gender and Family Promotion um, to find out more about the initiatives to power women and girls in their country. It was an extremely important and high profile meeting because we all know that Sophie is all about, um, you know, gender equality and saving women and girls from, you know, terrible fates. Yep. I'm pretty sure I told you the other day that Sophie had been to the Kigali Memorial, which is where they commemorate those who lost their lives in the genocide in 1994. Well, these are the pictures I found that show Charles and Queen Consort Camilla at the same venue doing the same thing several months ago, which I think is a nice touch. Hmm. When Sophie got done in Rwanda, she turned around and went back to the Democratic Republic of the Congo and went to a reception for women's rights campaigners. She then attended a reception at the British High Commissioner's residence with the same uh, people, the the you know, that we're going for women's voting. Now, in this picture, she's sitting alongside the special advisor to the president on youth, gender, and violence against women. Her name is Chantal Mulop. And this also took place during the reception where they were discussing the empowerment of women and girls. And after that, Sophie met with the Minister for Justice, Rose Mutombo, that's the person on the right, and other Congolese ministers at a round table to discuss, again, the women the women's rights. Sophie also discussed the work of Partners Care and UNABU and Rwanda Women's Network as well as others. Love her. Now while his wife is there, Edward, the Earl of Wessex, went today to Newcastle to thank the local emergency services volunteers and council staff who lent their support to the state funeral of his mother. He even met this absolutely gorgeous horse named Pluto, who is from the Northumbria Mounted Police, who led the procession on the long walk in Windsor. Very nice. 
Turning our attention back to Andrew, it's being reported now that the royal comeback is definitely not going because while Charles has sympathy for his brother, he will never allow him to return to frontline uh, work. He said he'll never, quote, allow him to set foot near the family business again. Now, the comments come after reports that Andrew held intense talks over a new position with the late queen. Of course, the queen didn't budge. He knows he let his mother down. But he wasn't convicted of a crime and he wants to try to figure out a route back and it just, yeah, not going to happen. In the middle of all this, there's a new PR nightmare for Andrew because apparently there's a new documentary coming out called Prince Andrew Banished. And it's going to look at everything Andrew ever did, everything that brought scandal and disgrace to the family. They're going to hear from former employees and journalists, including ex-press secretary Dickie Arbiter, who said... And I'm quoting, the man is an idiot. There's always one runt of the litter. And Andrew was it. Now, what apparently is coming out is they're saying, you know what? He didn't smoke. He didn't drink. He didn't do drugs. But his one big thing was sex. And the talk at all the dinner parties was the fact that he could not keep his trousers closed. Now, we know that his entire career collapsed after he paid um, an out-of-court settlement to um, somebody who accused him of sexual abuse. Now... The thing is, it's coming out that the family asked him to settle that because he was taking all the attention away from the Platinum Jubilee, okay? He was never accused. Uh, he never admitted to anything. He was never convicted of anything. Um, and the woman that he paid now is actually being sued by people saying that she groomed people in. This is going to be one heck of a documentary because they're saying that they interviewed Palace Insiders, journalists, members of Andrew's social circle, the legal team that brought the allegations to light. It takes a dive into the world of privilege, jealousy, desire, and greed, how he ended up in um, you know, contact with Jeffrey Epstein and Giselle Maxwell, the sex trafficking scandal, um, and in the meantime, a disgraced former police protection officer says that Andrew was a bully who had a revolving door of women coming into his Buckingham apartments. Of course, since this guy is a disgraced royal protection officer, who knows he if he can be believed. He um, was jailed for property scams and all kinds of other stuff. You know, I am going to throw one thing out here, though. For all of the crappy stuff that he's done, the one thing Andrew never did was throw his family under the bus the way Harry has. I can only say that I hope that when this documentary airs, it's something that I'll be able to watch here in the United States. A lot of times you guys get things in the UK that we just don't get here in the United States. And interestingly enough, I had a subscriber tell me recently that I'm showing things that she can't see and she lives in the UK. Hmm. All right, moving on. All right, this next story was very interesting. The Piper who played Sleep Deary Sleep as the Queen's Coffin was you know, being lowered down into the vault at uh, St. George's Chapel last month. Well, the king made him his personal piper starting um, now, following a tradition that's been going since 1843. So apparently, um, he now travels with the king and plays bad pipes outside his window at 9 a.m. every day whenever he's in the UK. I think that's a nice tradition. That's basically his personal alarm clock. Pretty cool. All right, moving on. Uh, talking about Charles, you should know that it was leaked that uh, Charles was going to be crowned on June 3rd next year, which was right about Lily's birthday. Um, and of course, Charles came out and Buckingham Palace came out and said that's absolutely not true. All right, let's move on now. All right, next up, the Prince and Princess of Wales went to Ireland. They put out a notice, although it was embargoed, but it doesn't matter. People showed up anyway. And their first stop was Pip's Suicide Prevention in Belfast. Just as an interesting note, they have different titles that they were given for Ireland when they were married. Don't ask me to pronounce them. Here they are arriving at their very first of three things that they went to today. Watch this. She was met at the door and handed beautiful flowers by a lovely 12-year-old girl. Watch this.
Now, this charity was founded in 2003 after 14 people committed suicide in Belfast over a short period of time back in 2002. One of the young people there, Erin Quinn, actually spoke with Catherine and William about her personal challenges, I guess she's suicidal, and how Pips is supporting her to overcome these challenges. I think that's lovely. And of course, they also spoke with staff and counselors as well while they were there. This seems like a very worthwhile charity. I'm glad they're involved. And of course, the charity put up a post saying how happy they were that Catherine and William stopped by. I think it's wonderful. Now, one of the other things that Catherine and William did was they helped the volunteer counselors pack up the charities. They're called Little Boxes of Hope. Now, these boxes are given to children following their time with the Pips Charity, which is, by the way, in Belfast, in case I didn't say that already, to assist with their ongoing recovery, which I think is very nice. And of course, when they left, there were plenty of people out there to shake hands. Now, I may not have the next two ones in the right order. I'm going to try my best, though, okay? So it looks like they then went on to the next venue. So they got to the next stop, which was the trade market. And of course, you know how competitive these two are. And so they had a drink making drink off, make off. You know, one person helped him, one person helped her, and they made the cocktails. Watch this. And they drank their drinks. All right, then it was time to move on to the third venue, which was at Carrick Connect. And so they got in the car, they headed their way. Here they are arriving. Watch this. Now, at this last stop, the two of them helped make no-bake energy bites. I think that's what they're called. And this place is called Carrick Connect. And there's the volunteers and team there support children and young people in their community with social or emotional difficulties. Fabulous. Now, of course, while they were there, they spoke with other people. And what do you guys think happened? Yeah, there was a baby there. Watch this. <laughs> Then they left. Watch this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Prince Harry is suing again. This is his fourth lawsuit against the Daily Mail group. And it looks like it's going to be one of the biggest because he's joining forces with Elton John and David Furnish, Sadie Frost, you know, all, all of these people claiming that um, they have been, I don't know, victimized and breaches of privacy. Now, here's the interesting thing. In the United States, you have a statute of limitations. You can't sue somebody for something that happened 
15 years ago. So I don't know how long ago these things happened, but I find it interesting that David Furnish, who was going to do Pearl with Meghan Markle, is one of the ones that signs up to get in on this lawsuit. I just find that very interesting myself. You know, we don't know how many of the allegations apply specifically to Harry. This is a lawsuit in its early stages. You know, and when I was thinking about this lawsuit, I thought about something else. Remember when Meghan Markle won a settlement for bullying? Did she ever donate that money? Because I'm pretty sure if she did, we would have heard where it went. You never heard another word about it. I wonder if she donated that money or if she pocketed it. Hmm. Moving on. All right, I just want to throw this in here really quick. It's come out now through Valentine Lowe that William actually offered the help of his own aide when Megan was complaining and said she needed help. And of course, Megan said no, because that doesn't fall in with her victim narrative. All right, now let's move on to the big story of today. All right, the stories are coming out now that um, there's a big problem with Netflix because Megan and Harry do not have enough content there's not enough content for what the heck it is that they're supposed to be doing with Netflix. And now Dan Wooten is coming out saying that it was inevitable that it was going to end up this way because Harry and Meghan thought they could demand huge sums of money from a streaming giant, but they haven't delivered the goods and they have nothing to deliver the goods. And the Netflix profits and subscriptions were skyrocketing thanks to lockdowns, right? And and maybe Ted Sarana, Sarando, sorry, maybe, maybe he would have been satisfied with the promise of this documentary. Remember, Harry and Meghan were going to make stuff that was uplifting and great for families and all of this stuff. And instead, all they've done is go out and swap stories of victimhood. And now the company is in serious trouble they they have to deliver non-woke content because now their subscriptions are dying, they're circling the drain, their um, stocks are plummeting. It's not going well. And everybody pretty much knew that eventually that was going to happen. Now they want to stall their series because they know that they slagged off on the royal family in it. And Charles is not going to give their kids the titles. So Harry and Meghan now are trying to stall and Netflix is like, no way. I mean, Netflix is hanging on to the crown, which for some reason people think is based on reality. And I mean, look what happened. It's the entire season is going to be around Charles and Diana's marriage. And Diana's close friend who helped advise the producers wanted her name off of it because she said it wasn't being done correctly. Then Netflix did Diana the Musical, which claimed that Diana used HIV patients for publicity. And, and it gave a degrading portrayal of Harry's mother. I, I have to agree. I think that Harry and Meghan have come to a very painful realization that much of the interest in them was because of their proximity to the royal family, a proximity that they don't have anymore because Charles is not stupid and he's not a pushover. And he's basically told them, if your book comes out and you slag us off, if this Netflix series comes out and you, and you slag us off and you continue to threaten us with your podcast, your children aren't going to get titles and now we're going to be done. Like you're about to like sever the tie permanently. You might want to reel it back. And that's what Harry and Meghan have been trying to do. And nobody's letting them. Not Netflix, not um, Penguin Random House. Yep. Time to pay the piper. All right, you guys. Uh, I have something to say. I'm going to make this statement at the end. And then we're going to finish this video. Okay. So let's do this. All right, everybody. Um, I just want to make a statement. And this will be absolutely the last time that I address this particular topic. Um, I've had a lot of comments left from people and I've removed them and I've removed the people. A lot of comments were made about the fact that um, I went on vacation. <laughs> like I, one woman wrote she was disgusted that I went on vacation to Hawaii. So I'm just going to say this just, you know, to get it out there. Hubby and I never took nice vacations. It's really hard to vacation when you're a family of four, when you're struggling, when you have a special needs child, you know, especially one that has autism and that thrives on schedule. Um, we never, I, I never bought myself a lot of jewelry. I never, we never went on expensive vacations. We had to pay for private schools for my son, you know, never lived off the state. And now that I've retired 
after working my little tush off for 27 years and socking money away hand over fist, I might add, um, I mean, almost the whole 27 years of marriage, I worked two jobs. I remember when we were first married, I worked 14 days on, two days off. Yeah. Um, if you're going to write that you're upset with me because I actually took my first vacation in three years, don't bother because all I'm going to do at this point is remove your comment and ban you from my channel. I, I'm not going to feel bad for actually going on a vacation. A vacation that I didn't even plan or set up, I might add. So um, put your little green-eyed monster away and let's just keep doing what we're doing. All right? Works for me. All right, you guys, so leave those comments below. Once again, we have showcased Catherine, William, Sophie, Edward, Anne. It seems like they're out doing what they need to be doing. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Keep going, guys, keep going. And what do you think about what's happening now with Harry and Meghan and Netflix? I really want your thoughts on that, okay? So leave those comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future uploads. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, Getter, Rumble. You can email me. The link to my Patreon is in the description box. To those of you who have donated through my coffee fund and through my thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.